All right, time for the early-ish summer update of where everything is at. This is when summer is really going, cooking up. All the plants or roots are getting low on the ground, getting into those the deep water. And now it's just being torched with the summer here. But uh, everything is going, I, I would say, as expected. You can see the difference in growth is still apparent of when you have the good strong transplants, the ones that weren't as strong and also had the interplanting, they don't really get back to normal. And I would say really ever, they'll eventually grow and, and get there, but certainly not as strong as what you have here with the tree trunks and everything. So going around, we have our triple layer of marigold, zinnias, cosmos. Those are just there for uh, cutting of flowers, but also attracting of the beneficials. Uh, so that takes a, little, takes a little bit. Marigolds are, are working okay, and this one's just decided to be uh, totally unrecognizable as a marigold. Uh, so let's just go through the tomato varieties, many different varieties, so everybody has an idea of kind of what's going well. And uh, I would say I don't really have a clear favorite. Um, I, I think they're going as expected in terms of good, strong transplants and the not-so-good ones. But a couple here and there that I would probably still recommend at the point. All right, so these are sun sugars. So these are a bit of the yellow ones, so big tall ones. And you see with all of the plants, I have all the growth cut as the plant is going up. So we have good airflow on the bottom of it, so I don't have much disease. You do see a lot of this, but that's because of the uh, stupid flea beetles. Uh, but other than that, you really won't see much disease on anything going on. You have the two liters going up into that. Everything is connected through these little plastic connectors that you can buy on Amazon. And then once it gets to the top, I kind of just stop doing the trimming and just let it go, uh, go, go crazy. And here is, it's good to be able to put many different varieties on a single panel, but the downfall of these cattle panels is when they get to the top, there's no other place to go. And eventually these will all just fall down and over. So eventually just fold on itself like a U, but is what it is. So we've only picked a few of these, so I can't comment on what variety tastes the best. We're only going to be pretty much looking at growth and what's going on so far. So sun, go, sun sugar right here. Bing cherry, I would say, is growing, but there's not that many tomatoes on these ones. Um, so we'll see how the growth goes. Usually you have a number of clusters on the bottom, but these ones don't have as much. Uh, cherry bomb is right here. It's these three. Uh, longer clusters, smaller sort of, uh, these are cherries. I would say the best one going so far in terms of growth and producing is going to be the cherry bomb. So this is the cherry. Nice dense clusters, nice plump uh, tomatoes. Uh, and then they grow like hell all the way up. If you look really closely, you see where the paint is going to be. There's flowers all on the top. It's going to be too heavy and it's going to fold on itself. So that is the ones that are growing the best because they germinated and uh, had an early life that was much better than everybody else's. Over here is Brandy Boy. This is an heirloom made hybrid. Uh, so this is uh, going to be a beefsteak, a larger one. Uh, kind of still looking like an heirloom, uh, but it has a better disease package and the skin isn't as thin. Damsel. Uh, so this is another beefsteak. I would say not so many on these ones, maybe in the back, but a little bit smaller of a traditional beefsteak. Uh, Big Boy. Big Boy is not as big as anticipated. But still a couple clusters here and there, but not so good. And then Pink Burley, Berkeley, uh, this is from Johnny's. This is another uh, slicer type. Uh, small little clusters, not so much growth. Uh, going ahead here, Napa, these are grapes. These are cherry babies, thin plants, not much growth, but at least have some clusters. Uh, and then Sun Gold is what we've already been picking. These are what people traditionally talk about as the best tasting ones, so we'll see how those goes. Jetstar is usually a little better in growth from what I've read, but not so much here. So it's probably the one that's the shortest and, and probably the most disappointing right now. Red Candy, uh, I would say I don't really like these sorts of clusters that are more extended, uh, but these are grapes going okay right now. Big Beef is down at the end. 
I would say they are also kind of struggling with the growth, but still going okay. I would say the two that are of the surprise are in the place where it doesn't get as much sun. So I anticipated these being the worst, but Amish Pace, which is an heirloom uh, plum, and then Grenadero, which is another plum. I would say large, tall, nice, tall, large uh, plant, but uh, there's not that many, especially on the Amish Pace, there's not that many tomatoes as you go up. So yes, you have these, but I don't even see a lot of flowers on it. So it's growing well, but maybe not producing as much. Uh, this one's a bit different from everybody else. I'm not sure how this is gonna produce, but it does have clusters of nice uh, plum ones, uh, but it doesn't really have much beyond that. So I think the plants are gonna be fine, but it's just not gonna produce as much fruit. Uh, San Marzano, uh, the second one, that's a plum. And then you also have the Sunrise Bumblebee. So this bed traditionally doesn't get as much sun. Uh, which is why I, the ones that struggled with germination and transplanting, I put them in the back. But the first two did better than the other ones. So uh, we are starting to get tomatoes turning. So I would say in the next couple of weeks, especially with the heat that we're about to anticipate here, uh, we're going to get a lot more turning of the red. As soon as you see the first ones go, then you're going to see a lot more going in succession. So this is the garden that has all the indeterminates, everything growing as expected, no clear winners. Uh, in terms of taste yet because we haven't touched any uh, t tasted anything yet and the ones that are the best were the ones that were best with transplanting but that can be a crapshoot on, on how it was within the greenhouse so no lettuce no nothing I would say beets have been growing uh, they traditionally die once you get into these summer heats but they're in the shadows of tomatoes and I've still been pulling one by one a day um, so I probably grew about a hundred and uh, probably 75 percent of the way they're still tasting fine totally okay with that uh, other than that, let's take a walk back into the summer garden. So before we get into the summer garden, uh, one thing that I'd like to point out is if you have issues with Japanese beetles, so you see a whole bag of inches of these things. Uh, so these are grubs, turns beetles that are very destructive, especially if you have raspberry plants because they tend to very much love those sorts of things. So this is a bait that they're attracted to. And then they eventually try to land, they fall into it, and they can't get out of this bag. And then it's somewhat tapered, and you just open it as they fall into their final uh, descent there. So the, the, the idea here is you want them to be attracted here and not in here. So if you have one of these things, you don't put them in where they're attracted, because at that point, you're also directing them of where they're eating, and then they don't really have any sort of options. They're just going to go all over the place. So the idea is if beetles are coming towards this way, you want to have this bag downwind so that the, the wind will disperse the uh, whatever the the attractant the lure is into that. And then before they go into the raspberries, they are attracted to this first, go to here, and then die before they get into the garden. So very effective, but you have to place them in, in the correct area in order for it to be effective. I see people put that within the garden and then you're just attracting everything. You will get some into this bag, but certainly not to the selectivity of when you have it on the outside because there's nowhere else to go because there's nothing else to eat besides this in the middle of grass. All right, so we're in the back. Strawberries have been, the net have been pulled back, everything. All the runners, I'm trying to keep up on them, but you want to keep pulling out these because those lead to more plants. And at this stage, you don't want more plants. You want more fruit, so you need to cut those back. These are done producing for the year, but I'm getting the second crop coming out of the middle row. So you see flowers. Had a good crop in the spring, now into the midsummer, early fall. I should be having more strawberries. If you look right there, there's another nice red one in there. Nothing in the greenhouse. And then we come, what we refer to as the summer garden. So, peppers over here, onions, beans, and then the squashes. Squashes, I'm doing different varieties just to figure out what works, uh, specifically with the uh, the green and, and the yellow. This is Butterbush from Burpees. I would say the flowers are plentiful and the amount of bees on these things in the morning is crazy. It's a hum as if it's a beehive back here. Uh, so the bees very much like these. We have very good pollination, all sorts of uh, butter squash, but I'll say Probably won't do these again because they are of the smaller variety. They're not going to get much bigger uh, than probably this guy. 
but you'll have more of them. Hasta la pasta, also from Burpees. This is gonna be a spaghetti squash. Uh, they are getting to the point where they're big. And if you've seen the other video, you need to keep up on picking the fruit because the plant will know it, it's, it's spending too much energy into the larger fruit to support that. So we'll pull back either producing flowers or the fruit itself. Um, so you see on this plant, I only see two of them. This one I picked one of them, so it only had really two of them. So it pretty much maxes out at two or three. And you don't see any flowers on these until you start picking again. Uh, this is a green zucchini. This is noche, very bizarre sort of skin on this, very different than traditional. It almost has like a wax-like feel onto that. Terrible germination, uh, doesn't produce as much, so it definitely won't be doing noche. Again, um, these ones are green machine. Let me see. Hold on. Let me just get these around. Okay. Zucchini Elite are these ones. I like these particular ones that they don't really turn into vines. They try to stay as much as a bush, but I don't like how the leaves kind of extend farther where they touch each other. It's fine if you were to uh, extend the bed and have more spacing between the two, but you need to keep up on the touching of leaves because once they start touching, they either stop growing in that area, and then once the disease happens, it then transfers into this. So I would say probably not going to do Zucchini Elite. Uh, they're not producing as much, plus they're the variety of, of growing type that I don't really uh, care for. Green Machine here, there's something wrong in this bed. It's not specific to the plant itself. Um, I don't know if there's something in the dirt, but it's certainly not having the ability to uh, soak up water. So it tends to die during the day, perk up in the morning and just repeat itself until it's pretty much gonna be dying. So. These ones are probably gonna be ripped out for pumpkins, uh, just because it's just taking up space. But this is what Green Machine looks like. It is a pretty good producer. The leaves are, uh, it is condensed, it is compact. So this one is, is a good one. Uh, this one from Harris is multi-pick. You don't see as many, but uh, produces a ton of the, the gooseneck-like uh, squash, the nice, compact plant it's not really moving far you can have a lot of plant per bed and get a lot of fruit per plant so these ones are quite good um, i thought that these ones were going to be uh, pretty much the clear winner and then butter stick came around so i don't really like the plants so you see it's turning more into the vine like so it's going to be getting all over the place but very good producers uh, very good looking squash uh, very large very quickly growing um, and they consistently produce those so multi-pick is a little smaller the goosenecks these are much larger of the longer stick varieties um, so I'm, I'm i'm between right now multi-pick and uh butter stick two other ones that we did were supersonic supersonic is i would say okay but certainly not living up to the name uh, i do like these uh, these are golden zucchini, look very nice, didn't germinate too well, but this is Gold Rush. Uh, I'd probably grow this again, uh, maybe a different variety because it doesn't seem to be producing a lot, but uh, beautifully vibrant fruit associated with this. Uh, we do bush plants for the, the beans. We try uh, pole ones, they produce a heck of a lot more, but are just annoying to deal with, so we'll just kind of plant these pull the, the first crop out, replant more seeds, and just go with it. Onions, finally the first year we got good successful onion growth. Usually it's a terrible plot where we have it, it doesn't really grow well. Lots of tops, not a lot of ball, but you see good ball pollination on a lot of these. These are from seeds. So you see all the seed ones have very good bulb formation. Uh, if you kind of just look, it's fairly thin this way. That was more of the bulbs that you can buy in the bag from Walmart and that. So they'll grow, the bulbs aren't as good, but that's known that the bulbs won't be as large in the bulb size as compared to the seeds. It's just, we didn't get good germination in the seeds this year, so we had to resort to the bulbs. But if you ever have a chance to do onions, always prefer this, always go with the seeds. Works much better. Uh, all right, so peppers, lots and lots of different peppers. Uh, these are ollies, these are an early variety of green pepper. Probably not gonna do these uh, again. Uh, I don't see any peppers and they should be producing. I'll show you another variety that is producing peppers. So it's 
mid-July right now, um, so peppers should be going in a month, and these aren't even producing anything, so probably not going to work. Uh, flavor Burst, all right, going here, Snowball, Gourmet, Glow, so these are bell peppers that are colors. Uh, we do see some already here, but they're going to take a little bit to turn color, so we're probably looking at easily one to two months out. My favorite and by far the clear winner every single time we grow is Vanguard. So these are Vanguard, uh, kind of a pricier seed, but it's certainly well worth the money and the growth. Produces tremendously uh, large green bell peppers and they produce a lot of them. It's just not going to pr produce a, f a few of them and it produces for many months. It's a little behind schedule, I would say. I don't see many flowers, but certainly in the next couple of weeks, this thing will start producing like crazy. Uh, the best looking, best tasting peppers uh, out of any green plant that I have. So I did a whole bed of those ones. Uh, over here is gonna be your Red Knight. This is supposed to be another early pepper. And I don't see any peppers associated with those. So that one's probably not gonna work for us. Lady Bell, we had very difficult time. So that's a green bell pepper, very difficult time germinating. Not much coming out of it, so probably Low chance we'll go with that again. Revolution and Declaration, I would say, are going to be the competitors to Vanguard. Uh, they look the same. Vanguard has big, broad leaves. Uh, but in terms of growth, they are going uh, neck to neck here. So now it just comes down to production and taste and what these peppers look like. So if anything is going to unseed Vanguard, it's going to be these two. So we'll see how that goes this year. Those are all from Harris. Harris usually has the best variety uh in the seeds uh that you grow but they just tend to be a little more expensive hungarian hot wax uh it's the the hotter ones that tend to struggle a little bit to, with growth uh, but they are starting to produce uh, some peppers here and there uh, baron is a poblano crazy tall the, t the tallest pepper that we have here not much flowers so hopefully uh, once it starts getting to the ends here it's going to start producing some peppers uh, Serrano peppers, a little different looking plant. It almost looks like it's uh, uh, wanting of water uh, because it looks pretty dehydrated, but that's just the way this thing grows. So it always looks a bit concerning, but we've learned that is just naturally how it looks. Uh, Flaming Flare, that's a Fresno pepper. So it's another unique different type of pepper. Uh, I don't think any is uh, There are some down here, so there's some already growing here so that's a that's a good variety are going jala fuego uh so that's a jalapeno with a little different flair to it not much going on there uh and then sunset is a stuffing pepper we've had good success with that in previous years we don't have as many plants this year but a nice yellow banana pepper such as those mild flavor good taste good producer and then you have your yellow picnic which are the snacks more of uh, flowers that are good to cut and then uh, attract pollinators. Blueberries are still a year or two behind and one of them uh, was more uh, as, as pretty much just a, a couple sticks was more appealing to a chipmunk to rip that out. Blackberries are going well uh, all over the place, taking a little while to turn, but this is the second year and they're already being quite good producers. And then if you go to the raspberries, there's nothing on the raspberries because all the chipmunks and birds ate them all. So I attempted to get a little net over the top of these things to stop that from happening, but that turned more into a bird guillotine than anything. So we had to take them off and uh, we'll try something next year. So raspberries is a total wash this year. Good growth, no complaints on that. It's just, we're gonna have to build an enclosure to stop the uh, animals from eating everything. And then more flowers over here. All right, so let's go back up to the new plot of garden. And now to the last garden. Going pretty well, I would say, for the first year in. Although you might have good soil above, you don't have good soil as, as, as you would want or as if something was a few mores into it. So it was, I would say traditionally plants get up to a point and then they struggle beyond that because they struggle to get the roots into the very compact dirt beyond that. So it's going to take a few years to break that up, either naturally through the roots or with me broad forking. Uh, and I would still say consistently, uh, my hatred of cucumbers continues. This is what happens when you have bacterial wilt. So no matter, 
I was here every morning and every night for about a month or two killing every cucumber beetle that I could find, which was dozens at times to a little bit. And it still doesn't matter because the majority of these plants are now dead. So, but it's nice having a trellis like this, that the cucumbers are visible, easy to grab, easy to see, that you can pick them as nicely. Uh, I would say in years past, in, in better soil, these plants would be already touching the top. But as I said, it gets up to a point and then struggles to get over the edge into a larger plant simply because the dirt or the root system can't penetrate the, the compact dirt. So it is what it is. So we'll let these go probably until the weekend. We're going to rip all these out, about 50 of them. And I got three different varieties going in. Regal, which is a pickling uh, cucumber, uh, county fair, and pestuous. Uh, the last two being supposedly resistant to bacterial wilt. We'll see what happens here. Uh, but yeah don't like uh, cucumbers at all all right so let's go down so these are all going to be we already looked at the indeterminates on the trellis these are going to be your determinants because their height is determined so they're not going to grow as tall we do florida weaving uh, so that's why you see all the string here uh, and we're going to have to do a little bit better florida weaving because they're getting heavier than i expected so we're going to need to put more posts in between so i'm just going to get some uh, furring strips and just put them in between each plant and continue on with the Florida weave there. I thought I could just be cheaper this year until uh, we could figure out what the plan is for it, but you're going to see some of these are, are angling quite uh, quite far here. All right, so let's go down. So Mountain Fresh, uh, I would say this plant is, is going well. Nice big clusters, easy plant to manage, no really issues with it. Uh, this one was high... I, uh, I approval last year. Uh, so this is mighty sweet. This is a grape determinant. I think this is from Johnny's. You can see what's happening with the heat. It's into the 90s and the plants know that it's becoming very energetically unfavorable to start producing more fruit because of the water is going to be more scarce during these times. So it will start pulling back uh, the tomatoes associated with this. So we'll get clusters out of these. Ultimately, we're just trying to get at least some from each plant so we can just compare and contrast which tomatoes are going to be the best tasting easy easy to work with and easy to grow and all that so these are mighty sweets again very good uh, probably won everything last year and we'll see how it goes against everything else uh, celebrity plus i would say no issues with celebrity plus nice easy plant to work with you can and you can't really tell on the camera but it's definitely leaning towards that way um, no really issues with this, minus it does kind of split. Having two liters is a little bit more challenging with determinants because of the Florida weave. Uh, easier on a trellis to, to manage them, but I try getting to a point where there's just one liter stem. Um, and then you have Celebrity Hybrids. So Celebrity is a very popular variety and uh, there are hybrids of them. So there's a hybrid of them and then there's a hybrid of the hybrid and that would be the plus. We'll see if there's a difference. Um, I really don't see much difference between the plant itself. So it's just gaining on specific characteristics like a thicker skin or something. So the taste probably should be fairly comparable. I would say my least favorite are these guys. Uh, these are baby cakes. Uh, very weird, bizarre plant. It's stubby. It's not growing up. It's just creating a bush uh, pretty much above the main stem. Um, but it's crazy the amount of tomatoes as much as I hated trying to manage that through a Florida weed because There's just so many different stems and it's difficult to control and, and manage and balance But then it started producing all these crazy clusters So I really didn't like it initially and then all of a sudden it started producing more than any other plant determine or determinant um, it is, has, I don't know if it's blight, it does have some disease issues right now. Typically these varieties have a strong disease package. And the issue with that is the fact that there's dots. Some of the dots are appearing on the tomatoes. But this is kind of an enigma for me right now. I hate it as a plant to manage it. But in terms of fruit production, no one is even, even close to this. So it's a cherry baby cakes. Can't remember where I got it from. Galahad, this is a slicer. Um, can't remember where this one is from, maybe territorial. Uh, this one is okay. Um, it's a little thinner than I would like. It's not producing as much. 
but at least it has an easier main stem that you can manage with your Florida wheat. So I would say in terms of growth, it's easier to good with this system, but in terms of production, maybe a little less than everybody else. Plum Perfect, Plum as the name suggests, I would say not so good. Uh, they just kind of form these stems and they have difficult time going upward. Difficult to manage Plum Perfect. I'm probably not gonna do Plum Perfect again unless it tastes exceptionally well. But in terms of trying to deal with it as a plant, kind of annoying. Uh, and then Mountain Merit, I would say is very much struggling. Uh, it's producing fine, but the plants are all off. Uh, it doesn't know what it wants to do as a plant, but it, it needs to grow up rather than kind of over and all over the place. It could be because it's producing a lot of clusters and it's just not making it very favorable, but more Mighty Sweets. We obviously had more than what we needed and we needed to put them somewhere. Red Deuce is highly regarded. Um, we'll see what happens. I would say an easy plant to grow. It's a nice thick stem, one major stem. Doesn't really have a lot of clusters. Uh, so the tomatoes are, are more so widespread on the plants. So the energy is being distributed. So it's, it's growing up, but also producing a tomato here and there, which is an easier way if you are uh, growing plants or tomatoes for yourself instead of getting five tomatoes at once you might be getting one per week and that would probably be the more ideal situation for everybody else uh, there's some mountain merits in here nothing really different um, tasty Lee tasty Lee is a slicer uh, so this one I would recommend nice easy plant nice cluster smaller tomato but still the plant is growing up where you could easily floor to weave them uh, Defiant, we've tried a couple times from Johnny's uh, Heavy Producer, uh, but I would say the taste is not as good, but we had some extra seeds and some space, so we decided to grow them. So we'll see how this one goes. My issues with this is usually this is as much as we get out of Defiant, nothing more beyond that. The plant just kind of stops at that point. Uh, let's go to the last row where we have kind of overflow of everything. Grapes, because we had a grape plant here and we just didn't want to get rid of it, so grapes are going there. Eggcorn squash. Uh, there's nothing really specific about eggcorn or any of these, uh, I would say, more unique ones of our garden, just because we just pick up seeds and just grow whatever. Um, baby cake, mountain fresh, celebrity hybrid. Uh, nothing really specific to here minus that you can see the lean of the florida weave if you do a florida weave in between two posts you need to have pretty much have a post in between all your tomato plants to have a good solid structure i'm just gonna jump over here so here's some more uh peppers so this is ace ace is an early pepper and they are producing peppers so it's not going to be a big plant it's not going to be something producing but you're going to be getting peppers before the other peppers come out so those are probably going to be done by the week by the end of the week so that's three weeks into july while the other ones are probably not going to be producing for a month so i will probably be growing ace next year again as that stop gap in between spring and the summer harvest of of, of the regular peppers and tomatoes simply because they are producing early uh whitney is I believe here Whitney is supposedly a very flavor flavorful uh, pepper it's kind of a, a smaller pepper um, but it gets good reviews online uh, red picnic and orange picnic and hammock so those are your snack peppers hammock gets gets the highest has the highest sugar rating of any snack pepper that is also from Harris it tastes exceptionally well if you can produce them. So there's the, the plant, for whatever reason, struggles in our area to get growing. It produces it, but then struggles to actually turn them to the orange color. But if you can make them incredibly well. Uh, and then we have all the other territorial snack peppers. So we have orange, red, and yellow in the back. There's nothing really there. Extra peppers, eggplant, and some watermelon. So mid-July in the summer, we are in the uh, growing stretches of where we're gonna get up to that point and then in a few weeks we're gonna be in the harvesting days and the long days of summer where everything starts growing too much, producing too much disease and all those sort of issues. So everything going well, everything that you see here, we really haven't watered that much. Uh, the sort of soil that we work with, uh, it's very absorbent, very retentive, 
uh, not much watering in all of these gardens. We only had to start watering in the last week or so, ever since the beginning of, of growing in the spring. Uh, water collection not up because we ran out of time. And everything that you see here, everything was transplanted. Everything that you saw here in the back, as well as the other one, everything was transplanted. And I think we, of the probably at least 500 to 600 plants, maybe even a thousand if you cook, uh, include all the lettuces, uh, we've maybe lost two, two transplants in all of the transplanting. So works well if you have the, uh, uh, the trays from Neversting Farm. Um, highly recommend those, easy to work with creates very strong transplants and you can get a garden like this. So we'll do another update probably in a month showing all the harvesting that's going on.